So good evening, everyone, and thank you for this introduction. And we, we, we know we are a very hard sell, in a way, for, for any conference. And, and we are even more grateful for, 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 for this, because you decided to have us on. Uh, so our game is playable uh, at the top floor. If you want to come by, we'll talk about it and discuss it. Um, so this is not exactly a uh, what they call a post-mortem of the game. It's more of a pre-partum in the sense that we are still in the process of, 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 sort of refining the last beats before we actually release it. Uh, but this is not even going to be too, too much about the game. I'll just introduce it. Uh, and you can, you're very welcome to come up to us and talk about it or just come up and play it if you're interested. But I'll, I'll then maybe uh, get a little, a little more to, into some things that we have learned while designing this game. Uh, by the way, we decided I will do the, the talking for you know, convenience sake, but Jaime is, is here as well for the full three days. So uh, you know, if we meet each one of us, we'll, we'll, we'll know. It's like the carabinieri, no? One talks. <laughs> yes, this is, there's a say in Italy that the two carabinieri, you know, the two policemen, there's one who talks and the other is just a bad cop standing there. And that's what he's doing. So, okay, so what is Eretz Israel? Eretz Israel is a card-driven board game about the birth of the state of Israel. Um, so this is a rather complex game. Uh, we have about a three thirty to four hour play session in general. So this is a, a long endeavor. It has a very thick <laughs> manual and it kind of, we think it kind of appeals to a very niche audience within the board game community, but still a, a, an audience that exists, an audience for games maybe some have heard or some have played, games like Twilight Struggle or Paths of Glory. These are complex simulations of very sort of drawn and complicated um, political, diplomatic, uh, military events. In our case, what we are simulating is this um, about 30 year period that goes from 1917 with the Balfour Declaration. This is a declaration that the British um, government made saying we are supporting the birth of a national state for the Jewish community in Palestine. And we are, you know, we're gonna be on the ground sort of making sure that this eventually happens. Uh, up to 1949, the end of the first Arab-Israeli war. And of course, um, you know, as a result of the actual declaration of the existence of the state of Israel. This is the, the, the period we're trying to um, model. And of course, as you can understand, this is a very complicated period uh, fraught with, uh, with diplomatic, political, military issues and conflicts and one sort of issues and conflicts that of course we have seen developed through all, throughout the whole 20th century and still to this day. Um, so this is what the game is, is about. This is a map of the game. This is an old uh, version of, no, this is the new version of the map actually. Um, so um, this is the map that you're gonna that you're gonna play with, and essentially it is a map of the um, Palestine as it was in 1917, so to speak. Uh, the blue sort of uh, borders are, are are the borders of Palestine, and the Arab states are around it, of course. So this is a very quick timeline of what we did. As you can see, this game is about. It's about three years old, at least in our minds. Um, I'm not gonna go into the details of the game development. Again, we can talk about that if you're interested, but um, just the first two sort of um, uh, points there. Uh, we had about a year in which we only did research. So we didn't actually, we, we thought about game design, but we mostly did research. And then we had the first public presentation in the spring of 2018, so about a year and a half ago. And then we stopped doing public presentations. And I'll, I'll get into why we did that a little later, but this is our first sort of presentation. And we're very happy to be here. We, we feel kind of at home, despite being a analog game, so slightly different from what most of other people are doing here. But, but this is a very good uh, avenue for us to present this. So uh, again, thank you for this. So. Um, but what we want to do today, very shortly, is, is to give you maybe three takeaways or three lessons that we learned while doing this process, while designing a game about a very, very, very complex political, um, certain, uh, economic, diplomatic, um, military issue. Uh, so this is a list of, of takeaways. I'll go into it very, uh, very briefly. So the first one, um, as Madalena said, we are academics in our sort of day job. Um, and so we're kind of comfortable, comfortable with telling people to do their homework. But uh, in this case, this is something that, that we found out was essential. And it can be essential to any game design process. Take your time for research. 
for you know, building maybe a library of books or, or just a stack of books on your table that are about the thing you're designing about, right? Uh, we played, of course, all of the few games that are out there that map similar conflicts either in scale or geographically or sort of in, in, their con you know, in the way these games work. Uh, but mostly we read books and articles and, and papers and essays, and we sort of tried to build a, a, um, uh, a mindscape for us to be in when designing this game, sort of to have foundations to what we were doing. And we felt this was what propelled the game, doing this in a sort of consistent fashion. And I know not everyone has the time to go to a library or to, we're very lucky in that, we're very privileged in that we exist within the sort of a, a department in a university that has libraries. But if you can, this is, we thought this was crucial to us, do your homework. The second one is of course a little bit more um, sort of more complicated. I'll be very brief about it and I'm sorry if I'm sort of missing some of the things I want to say, but, but please again, come and chat with us if, you, if you're interested. Um, I don't think there's a way of making a game that is not political. You know, we've heard so many times, no, this game is not political, we're not making a political statement, you know, just shooting people in the face, what's political about that? Uh, <laughs> but, but I don't think there's a way of making a game that is not political. In our case, we just, you know, we just fell into it in the sense that we cannot not, you know, there's no way we can make a game that is not political in this case because everything about what we're saying is political. It's sort of, we are dealing with one of the biggest, political issues and conflicts of the 20th century and even before that and possibly even in the future. So we tried to, to accept political accountability, which meant two things. One, make sure that if we want to say something in the game that comes from a political position that we hold and we say some things in the game, this is clear. You know, we are saying this because we hold this political position and we think this um, thing, we model this thing in this way so that it tells this to the player. Right? And this comes out of research, is based in history, but still is our political position, right? And the second thing is when we cannot make that clear, and this is the case of this card. We have a card called Final Solution, that is of course uh, the Shoah or the Holocaust that happened in Europe while sort of in the time frame of our game, but away from our game. We're modeling things that happened in Palestine, but this is of course essential to our game because the Shoah had enormous consequences on, on the birth of the State of Israel and all the whole, um, historical process that we're talking about, we could not find a way to model these events in a satisfactory way in a game. Satisfactory meaning in a respectful way, in a way that sort of measured with the enormity of this, uh, of this event. So we made something that everyone in game design school is told, is told not to do. We went the non-elegant way. The sort of, in game design schools they tell you, know, you, you find one rule that says this in a very elegant way we decided to have in the manual written down in the most unelegant way we could. You know, this is an event that happened. We needed to model it. We we're sure this is not the, the right way to do it. So we'll write down in the manual that we tried our best, but this is still not a satisfactory way of modeling it. Still, it's in the game, but in the manual, we kind of make amends for that. We say there's not a rule in a game that can represent the enormity of this event uh, within the history of Europe and, and of humankind in general in the 20th century. And this happens for various events in the game. We represent very complex events, and sometimes we fail to represent them with one single rule, and we go about sort of making uh, clear that we tried, and, and that what is in the manual kind of tries to give a context to the choice that we made. That's our way of accepting political accountability. And finally, value games and play. So why we, did we stop making presentations? After the first presentation that we made, this was in our department at the university, we had a unpleasant confrontation uh, with a student who came to us and said, uh, you cannot make a game about this. This is a uh, delicate issue. Uh, this is something people still are still mourning for, are still fighting for, are still struggling with. Uh, you cannot make a game about this. So this was very complicated for us because we didn't feel we were playing with anybody's sort of blood, especially the Palestinians, uh, so to speak. Uh, but we understood that where, where she came from. She came from a place where games and play are a, sort of a medium that only needs to deal with the things in life that are sort of frivolous, that are you know, not important. 
So we felt from there it was our responsibility when presenting the game of always saying our position is that games are a communicative medium, are a medium for communication and art and expression and political thought that is absolutely capable and absolutely fit for the representation of very complex, even uh, 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 tragic events. So we made sure that when we present the game, as in this case, we say we also value the facts and we, want to, we stand behind the fact that games are absolutely fit for saying very uh, dramatic, tragic things or, or, or uh, dealing with dramatic and tragic events. So that opened our eyes to the fact that we, were not, we would not be able to go about the world and say, well, we made a game about this and you know, it's fine. We also need to say, it, we think it is fine to do it. We know it is fine for games to uh, work on very complicated subjects. Um, I think this is all we had. We'll leave you with this interesting quote from Romain Gary, of course, a great uh, French writer and someone who fought uh, against Nazism in World War II who says, uh, that the nationalism is the cancer of patriotism, and this is one of the things we stand behind in this game. Thank you. <laughs>